Mark 4, 35 to 41. Let us read this all together. Aloud. Ready? Go. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the people, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, once again, that you have brought us together in this place, and the other congregations and spare stations as well. And those many people today watching through live streaming, I pray, Lord, that the message will be clear, that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will give the understanding of your word, and that your name will be magnified and be glorified, Lord, that all of us, dear God, would realize that it is you and not us, Father God. That is our strength and our comfort and our security and our protection. May now please bless our time together for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, I'm going to preach to you on the subject I entitled, Does, Does Jesus Care? I'm so glad I think that for many, many years of preaching, 51 years of preaching, that I think that I have already uh, uh, preach so many subjects and so many doctrines. And uh, this is one of the preachings that I did many, many years back. And whenever there is a need to preach something like this, there's always a message that the Lord would impress upon me to preach on. Well, this story, I believe, is very familiar with you. The story of the Lord Jesus Christ, who, after, uh, I think this is one of the uh, time in which the Lord Jesus Christ uh, actually gave some lessons to the apostles. This is also after he was uh, tempted in the wilderness. And so that day, he climbed up the boat and they went to the other side. And these were fishing boats that were owned perhaps by uh, Peter, John, James, and Andrew. And all of a sudden, nagkaroon ng napakalaking bagyo sa dagat. Ito po ay bagyo ng hangin. Walang ulan. Kundi hangin. At syempre, pag malakas ang hangin sa dagat, sa Sea of Galilee, tumataas ang mga alon. And those waves began to beat against the ship so that uh, the ship began to have water inside it. Natakot ang mga apostles because of that. But we find the Lord Jesus Christ asleep. Now, why asleep? Well, he was a man at the time. And he experienced all the weakness of man except sin. Isang bagay lang ang hindi pwedeng gawin ng Panginoon, magkasala. Pero lahat ng kainaan ng tao, lahat ng experience ng tao ay naranasan niya. Nagutom, nauhaw, napagod. 
At that time, he was a very tired man because of the work that he has been doing. And so, when he was there in the ship, he fell asleep. So, habang bumabagyo ang ating Panginoon pinatutulog and the apostles decided to wake him up and asked him a very important question. Not a careless question. But I think a question of a man that is concerned for their own safety. Ang sabi nila, Master, carest thou not that we perish. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ woke up and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the Bible says, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then, he faced the apostles and said, bakit kayo natatakot? Bakit wala kayong pananampalataya? Because their concern, actually, is a manifestation of having no faith. Their fear of the storm is an evidence of them having no faith. Then in verse 41, it says, They feared exceedingly, lalo silang natakot, and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Sa kanilang pagkikisama sa Panginoong Yesu Kristo, nakita nila ng ating Panginoon na hindi isang ordinaryong tao. Nandoon ang kanyang kapangirihan. Nandoon ang kanyang kalakasan. Nakita po ito ng mga apostles. But the main question that I would like to ask that the apostles asked was this, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Wala po ba kayong pakialam sa amin na mapahama kami? Do you really care, Lord? Well, of course, Jesus cares. Do you believe that? Amen. He does. Now, this is not a question in the mind of God, but only in the mind of man. In the mind of God, He cares. But in the mind of man, they have questioned if Jesus really cared. However justified our sufferings might be, God cares. We might not understand what is happening and even refuse to understand. Still, Jesus cares. Let me establish some facts here to prove that our Lord Jesus is a loving and a caring God. Particularly, to his own people. First of all, when we speak of does Jesus care, it is a matter of faith. It is a matter of faith. Ang pinag-uusapan dito, ang pananampalataya natin. You know? I think that the many of you have viewed my video the other day. Di ba? I entitled The Faith That Overcomes COVID-19. And uh, if you have not seen that yet, see the video. Amen? I won't go. Nagita nyo ba yung video? And I'm so glad that uh, 23.7 thousand people have seen that already. No, as quick as they are. It's just a, a two or three day old video. Oo. Kita ko yung kaibigan kong makapangyarihan. Nagvi-video siya. Wala pang tatlong libo ang nakakita nung kanyang video. But ang pastor ninyo sa si video niya ay 23,000 na ang nakakita. So kung hindi pa nakikita, tinan nyo. At sana maging pagpapala sa inyo. Maging comfort sa inyo. Nang ating Panginoon sa gitna ng takot, 
sa gitna ng kawalan ng pag-asa, He cares. Why? It is a matter of faith. A matter of just trusting God. A matter of believing that God can do everything for us. A matter of knowing that there is nothing that God cannot do for His own children. A matter of realizing that God is always there to protect us. A matter of knowing that God is always there to secure us. Why? Because He cares. It's a matter of faith. No? A faith in the God who cares. A faith in the God who cares. In verse number 40, He said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? It was a gentle rebuke from God, a gentle rebuke from Jesus Christ. Bakit kayo natatakot? Ha? Huh? Oh, nakita niyo yung bagyo. Sinong hindi matatakot sa bagyo? Am I right? Oh, sinong hindi matatakot din sa, sa coronavirus? Sabi ko nga, it is normal for any man to be afraid. But it is no longer normal for a believer to continue being afraid. Why? Because Jesus Christ cares. Faith in the God who cares. Not only that, but faith in the God who saves. Amen? Faith in the God who saves. The Bible says that He has all the power to save man to the uttermost. To the uttermost. To all of them that come to Him and believe in Him. Ibig sabihin, wala pong pagkakataon na ang ating Panginoon hindi makakaligtas ng lubusan. Ang kaligtasan ibinigay ng Panginoon sa atin ay kaligtasang lubusan. Kaligtasang kumpleto. Amen ba? Kaligtasan na, na hindi fragmented, ng hindi installment plan. Ang kaligtasan na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa bawat taong sumasampalataya sa Kanya ay kaligtasang kumpleto. Oh, faith in the God who saves, who has all the power in the world to save us. And not only faith in the God who cares, not only faith in the God who saves, but faith in the God who keeps. Faith in the God who keeps. Pananampalataya sa Diyos na may concern sa atin. Pananampalataya sa Diyos na siyang nagliligtas. At pananampalataya sa Diyos na siyang nag-iingat. Amen ba? na siyang nag-iingat sa atin. Pinangako niya yan sa atin. Anong sabi ng Panginoon sa atin? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen po ba? Yung po mga salita ng Panginoon, I will never leave you nor forsake you, tells us that God does not only save us securely and save us completely, but God is the one that keeps us from all evil. We cannot be separated from Him. We cannot be separated from Him from the time we put our trust in Him all the way to eternity. All the way to eternity. Huh? Hindi tayo pwedeng mahiwalay sa Diyos mula nung tayo ay sumampalataya sa Kanya hanggang pagkatapos ng buhay na ito. Hanggang tayo pumunta sa kalangitan. Hanggang makita natin ang buhay na walang hanggan. Hanggang makita natin ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ng hayagan ang kaligtasan niyan. Ang kanyang pag-iingat niyan ay nagpapatuloy at hindi kailanman magmamaliw. Faith in the God who cares. Faith in the God who saves. And faith in the God who keeps. It is a matter of faith. Does Jesus care? He cares. Secondly, does Jesus care? It is a matter of focus. 
a matter of focus. Again, in the book of Mark, chapter 6. Mark chapter 6 and verse number 50. Mark chapter 6 and verse number 50. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them. You know what uh, this verse suggests? You know what this tells us? The devil wants us confused. About Jesus. Ha? Ang ginagawa ng Diablo sa lahat ng ating mga problema sa buhay. Ang ginagawa ng Diablo sa lahat ng ating mga kasakitan. Ang ginagawa ng Diablo sa lahat ng mga trouble natin, ina-outfocus na tayo. Do you realize that? Tinatanggal sa atin na tapat tayo tumingin sa Kanya o lumakad na kasama Niya na at ang ating mga mata, ang ating mga kaisipan, ang ating mga puso ay hindi dapat mahiwalay sa pagtingin sa Kanya. It is a matter of focus. The devil wants us confused about Jesus. But still, ano ang tinuturo ng Bible? The Bible teaches us that number one, that He is the God of history. The Lord Jesus Christ is the God of history. Ang sabi ng ating Panginoon, Before Abraham was, I am. Bago ba dumating sa Abraham, andyan na ako. Ako na. Before Abraham was, I am. And this is not just something that uh, is a statement or something that are, you know, Just two words. This is the title of Jesus. This is the character of Jesus Christ. The word I am speaks of himself. The word I am speaks of his character. He is the I am. He is the God of history. He is the God of events. He is the God of events. Again, He says, He is the great I am. He is the great I am. In verse 39 of Mark 4, it says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And they feared exceedingly, in verse 41, and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Nung si Moses ay nakita ang, Pangin- nakita ang Panginoon sa burning bush. Remember? Ha? Doon sa Midian. At doon, tinawag siya ng ating Panginoon. Anong sabi ni Moses? Lord, pagating ko doon sa Egypt, anong sasabihin ko na nagpadala sa akin? Anong sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya? You tell them that the one that sent you is the great I am. Hello. Now, you go to the book of John na sinabi ng Panginoon sa mga Hudyo, I am that I am. You see, ibig sabihin, yung nagpakita sa Panginoon sa burning bush, nung nagpakita kay Moses sa burning bush, walang iba kundi ang Panginoong as Kristo. He was the great I am during Moses' time. He is the great I am during John's time. He is the great I am during Paul's time. And He is the great I am during our time. The great I am from eternity to eternity. Jesus is the great I am. And because of that, I am secure. And because of that, I have this real faith. And because of that, my, my eyes and my, and, and my heart and my mind should only be focused on Him. Whatever happens to me. The God of history. He is the God of events. And the Bible says, He is the God of prophecy. He is the God of prophecy. Go to the book of Revelation. 
Revelation chapter 1. In verse number 8. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. Said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. What? The Almighty. Do you know that is the real meaning of the word I am? The real meaning of the word I am is what? I am the Lord. I am He that cometh, which is, which was, and which is to come. It means this, folks. When the Bible says that Jesus is the great I am, we have a God that is always present. He was present in the past. He is present in the present. He is present in the future. God is always present in the lives of every believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. The God of history. The God of events. The God of prophecy. So therefore, first, it is a matter of faith. Second, it is a matter of focus. And thirdly, does Jesus care? It's a matter of foundation. It's a matter of foundation. Let's open the book of Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7. And let's read. Beginning verse number 24. And many of you know this. Beginning verse number 24. And the rain descended. And therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and do with them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It is a matter of foundation. Is Jesus your foundation? If Jesus Christ your foundation, then your life is founded upon the rock. Anong ibig sabihin ng sun? Anong ibig sabihin ng buhanginan? Na kapag ang buhay mo ay naka nakatatag o nakalagay doon sa mga bagay ng kamunduhan. Do you realize that? Kung yung buhay mo ay nakadepende sa pwede mong hawakan, pwede mong tingnan, pwede mong i-handle. Kung yung buhay mo nakadepende sa trabaho mo, kung yung buhay mo nakadepende sa pera mo, kung yung buhay mo nakadepende sa magulang mo, kung yung buhay mo nakadepende sa mga bagay ng mundong ito, yan ang foundation na tinatawag na buhanginan. Subalit, kung ang buhay mo nakadepende sa ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo, ibig sabihin, ang buhay mo ay nakatatag doon sa puntasyon ng bato. Jesus Christ is that foundation. It's a matter of foundation. Does Jesus care? Yes, He does. It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of focus. It's a matter of foundation. Unang-una, when it comes to foundation, pwede nating sabihin, Jesus is the rock of my foundation. I will be firm. Can we say that? Let's say it right now. Ready, go. Jesus is the rock of my foundation. I will be firm. Kung tunay nga na ang Panginoon ang puntasyon ng buhay mo, magiging matatag ka. Hello? Magiging matatag ka sa lahat ng bagyo ng buhay. Magiging matatag ka sa lahat ng kasakitan ng buhay. 
Magiging manatag ka sa lahat ng salot ng buhay. Magiging manatag ka kapag dumarating na ang mga bagay na uudyok sa iyong gumawa ng masama. Magiging manatag ka pag dumarating na ang mga temptations ng buhay. Magiging manatag ka pag dumarating na ang mga bagay na alam mong hindi dapat mong gawin. Magiging manatag ka. Why? Because Jesus Christ is your foundation. Sabihin uli natin. Ready, go. Jesus is the rock of my foundation. I will be firm. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Say it again. Ready, go. Jesus. Secondly, it says, I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. Ikinahihiya ba natin ng Panginoon? Sa lahat ng bagay ng ating buhay, alam mo, if you are not living for the Lord Jesus Christ, ikinahihiya mo siya. Not only na ikinahihiya mo siya, you're putting Jesus to shame. Hello? You're putting Jesus to shame. In First Timothy chapter, in Second Timothy, chapter one, in verse number twelve, anong sabi rito? Ni Timothy, ni, ni Apostle Paul. Ang sabi niya, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Suffer these things. Akala ba natin pwede kang lumakad na kasama ang Panginoon na wala kang suffering? Maraming tao nag-aakala, ah, if I will just walk with Jesus, ah, if I'm just going to let the Lord Jesus Christ be the Lord of my life, I will not suffer anything. No, you will suffer so many things. But you could be able to bear it because Jesus is with you. Huh? Sabi ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Hindi ako nahihiya. Why? For I know whom I have believed. Alam ko kung sinong sinampratayanan ko. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. I gave my life to Jesus Christ And I know that He is able to keep me forevermore. There's no doubt about that. And I am not ashamed. I will not be ashamed to speak of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed? When you have the opportunity to talk to people about Jesus, would you talk, would you talk to that man about Jesus? Sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, sinabi ko sa inyo kahit nung isang linggo, kahit nung sa video na ibinigay ko, that this is the best time, one of the best moments in which every believer of the Lord Jesus Christ can speak of Him. Can tell people about Jesus. Kaya nung isang araw, hindi ko na, you know, hindi na ako nag-atubili pa. Nung minitin ko lahat ng mga staff ko sa City Hall, sa Kongreso, sa District Office. I grabbed the opportunity na sabihin sa kanila about the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. Can you say that? Will you say it? Ready? Go. I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. Do you believe that? Yes. If you believe that, let's say it again. Ready? Go. I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. Ano yung una? Jesus is the rock of my foundation. I will be firm. Ano yung pangalawa? I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. Memorize that. Say it over and over again. 
When the devil begins to tempt you, when the devil begins to disturb you, when the devil begins to trouble you, when the devil begins to make you doubt, say it. Jesus is the rock of my foundation. I will be firm. Say it. I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. In 1 John chapter 5. In 1 John chapter 5. And verse number 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Ano yung confidence? Huh? Ano yung confidence ni Apostle John? Na kung ano man ang hihingin ko, ayon sa kanyang kalooban ay papakinggan niya ito. Papakinggan niya ako. Naunawa niyo ba yan? Naunawa niyo ba? Ha? And in verse number 15, And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Ako confident, sabi ni, sabi ni Apostle John, na ano man ang hingin ko, ha? Ano man ang hingin ko? Ang sabi niya, ako ay papakinggan niya. Pero ang pangalawa, ang sabi niya, at alam ko, alam natin lahat, na siya ay nakikinig sa atin at anuman ang ating hingin, alam natin na ibibigay niya ang mga bagay na yan sa atin sapagkat yan ay ayon sa kanyang kalooban. Do you believe that? It is a matter of foundation. Do you know why you ask a lot of things, it seems God is close about it. You might say, well, because, you know, it's not the Lord's will. Or it might, it, it, it might not be. But if it is, God won't give it. Do you know why? Because you lack the faith to believe Him. Because you're not focused on Him. Because your life is not founded on the rock. I'd like you to look at your life right now. Are you really living by faith? Are you? Huh? Now, siguro ang tanong ganito. Do you know how to live by faith? Do you know how to live by faith? If I ask you right now, why don't you take a piece of paper and you explain to me how to live by faith? Can you write it down? Huh? Now, you know, that's a simple question. But many, many Christians cannot even answer that. Pag sinabi natin, I am living by faith, ibig sabihin, ang foundation ng buhay ko, ang salita ng Diyos. I cannot live without the Word of God. Do you realize that? I cannot. Kung nabubuhay ka araw-araw sa buhay mo, according sa iniisip mo, according only to your own decision, according only sa kaalaman mo, then you're not living by faith. So, balit, kung ating binubuhay araw-araw, ay makikita mo ang salita ng Diyos. Yan. Ito ang buhay ko, Panginoon. Ito. Ang salita ng Diyos ang buhay ko. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng living by faith. Na bago tayo magplano, bago tayo mag-isip ng anuman, isinasantabi mo ang paniniwala mo. Isinasantabi mo yung opinyon ng ibang tao. 
ang nakikita mo kung ano ang nakalagay sa kanyang salita. Ito bang gagawin ko? Ito bang decision ko? Kaluban ba ng Panginoon yan? Ito bang ginagawa ko ayon pa sa kanyang salita? Ito bang attitude ko? Malulugod ba ang Panginoon dito? Ito bang karakter na ipinapakita ko araw-araw? Yung ugali na ipinapakita ko araw-araw? Yung ba'y makikita ko na ugali ng Panginoong Heso Kristo? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng living by faith. Naunawaan niyo ba? Naunawaan niyo ba? Sana. Naunawaan niyo. Sapagkat napakasimpleng bagay nito, pero alam niyo ba, kahit ang mga simpleng bagay, hindi natin mauunawaan sapagkat ang Espiritu ng Panginoon ang siya nagbibigay ng pangunawa sa atin lahat. At kung hindi tayo nakikinig sa kanyang salita, papaano tayo kakausapin ng Banalang Espiritu? Do you realize that? Because the Spirit of God can only speak to us through the witness of the Word of God right here. Wala nang iba. Okay? So, it's not only a matter of faith when we say, does Jesus care? It's not only a matter of focus when we say that Jesus care, but it is a matter of foundation. Napakita natin, Jesus is a rock of my, of my foundation. I will be firm. I know whom I have believed. I will not be ashamed. And then, anong tinuturo dito sa 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15? Ang tinuturo dito, He is my confidence. I will be strong. He is my confidence. I will be strong. Who is your confidence? Pag yung confidence mo, ang sarili mo, you're weak. Ano niyo ba yan? You're weak. Ha? Sino man tao na yung kanyang confidence, ang kanyang sarili, yung kanyang opinion, ha? nakikita mo yung weakness mo eh. Di ba? But if your confidence is in the Lord, whatever it might be, you'll be strong. Alam nyo, hindi lahat ng bagay alam ko. Hindi lahat ng pagkakataon spiritually strong ako. Hindi lahat ng pagkakataon tama ang ginagawa ko. Kayo, Kung ang pastor nyo, sinasabi ko sa inyo yan eh, ilalo kayo. You know? Maaari ba nating sabihin, He is my confidence, I will be strong. You know what? Let's believe it. Amen? Let's stand on it. Let's say it. Ating sabihin lahat, He is my confidence. I will be strong. Say it. He is my confidence. Is He? Is He? And lastly, not only when we speak of does Jesus care? When we speak of the question that the apostles asked, Master, carest thou not that we perish? We speak of that as a matter of faith. We speak of it as a matter of focus. Nalala ko lang. Pag sinabi yung focus, di ba? Nung bumabagyo, ano kagad ang nakita ng mga apostol? Ang Panginoon o yung bagyo? Yung bagyo eh, di ba? 
Hindi naman ang Panginoon eh. Yung bagyo eh. Oo. No nakita nila yung Panginoon, natutulog doon. Ah, in a way, sinisipan nila ang Panginoon eh. Ba't natutulog to? Am I right? Nung ginising nila yung Panginoon, imbes sabihin nila, Lord, kayo po, kayo po ang makakapagkalma ng bagyo. Binanggit pa nila eh, Master, do you care if we perish? It's not the Lord, but the things in this life. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng focus. Do you realize that? Oh, It's a matter of foundation. Then lastly, it is a matter of fact. Or truth. The book of John, the book of John chapter 8, verse number 32. Alam nyo lahat yan, di ba? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Not that, not the truth that man can give you, not the truth that the press can give you, but the truth that the Bible speaks of. This is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And this is the truth that makes us free. And who is the epitome of that truth? Ito yung written truth. Ito yung written word. Who is the epitome of that? Jesus Christ is the living word. As we believe in the written word, it tells us that we put our faith on the living word. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, The Bible says God gave us His Son, the Lord Jesus. Number one, God gave us His Word. In the book of Revelation, makikita mo ang tawag sa ating Panginoon. Anong tawag sa Kanya? The Word of God. Yan ang tawag sa ating Panginoon. The Word of God. Binigay niya sa atin ang Panginoon bilang Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Binigay sa atin ng Diyos ang kanyang salita na siyang dapat na panuntunan natin, na siyang dapat prinsipyo natin, na siyang dapat buhay natin. Ito ang buhay natin eh, ang salita ng Diyos. Pangatlo, binigay sa atin ng Panginoon ang Ekklesia. He gave to us His Ekklesia, His Church. For us to what? For us to send, to witness, to pray, to worship, to give, to care, to proclaim, to live, to fellowship. Do you know how important the Ecclesia is? Do you know how important? Jesus died for the Ecclesia. That's how important the Ecclesia is. Kaya alam nyo, ito ha, pag hindi nyo ginagawang important ang Ecclesia, it follows. You're not really making Jesus important. Because if Jesus Christ is important to you, what is important to Him will be important to you too. Am I right? So, hindi pwede yung, ah, mahalaga sa akin. Member ako ng MBBE, mahalaga sa akin yan. Well, are you faithful? Ah, hindi pinag-uusapan niyo yung faithfulness. Basta mahalaga sa akin yun. Are you involved? Do you witness? Do you care? Are you a cheerful giver? Ah, hindi pinag-uusapan niyo yung cheerful giving. Basta ako, important sa akin ang Panginoon. Important sa akin ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Important sa akin ang Ecclesia ng Diyos. You cannot say that, po. Why? Because if Jesus Christ is really important to you, what is important to Him will be important to you too. His Word, the Bible. Will be very, very important to you. 
his work, his ministry. His ecclesia will be very, very important to you. You know, we should daily tell the world, kahit sa pagkakataong ito, lalo na sa pagkakataong ito, we can tell the world that Jesus cares and He still cares. Because I felt that care. I know He cares. Does he? Do you feel he's scared? Do you know he cares? Let me know. If you really know that Jesus cares, so we know it is normal to be afraid. But when you know that Christ cares, the, the fact that Jesus cares overcomes all kinds of fears. Kaya nga sabi sa Bible, I will not fear whatever man does to me. Kaya nga sinabi ni Psalmist David sa Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You can tell that in the face of the devil. You can say it in the midst of this plague that we have today. You can say it even if there are some troubles that engulf your life. You can say it with all of the problems that the world can give. Whatever it might be, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know what? Not realize go. A person that lives for God, that honors God, that truly put God first, will not be afraid of anything. Because the more troubles they experience, the more courageous he becomes. All of you know what your pastor has gone through since the very beginning of this ministry. And you know what? I do not blame God for any of that. I will be an ungrateful man if I ever blame God even for the slightest trouble I have. I would rather praise Him because some of the troubles I have, I brought that to myself. And I would praise Him for all the troubles. As I sleep tonight, I will depend on him as I wake up the next day. I will still depend on him. 24-7 in my life. 
I will always tell God, Lord, I am depending upon you alone. We have some people that have financial problems today. Faithful people. Not because we trust the Lord that we will be exempt from all of those problems. In the first place, one of the reasons why we have those problems because we have done wrong. The second reason why we have those problems because we have made wrong decisions. The problems we have today, whether it be financial problems or any kind of problems, is the effect of the things we have done in the past. And you don't blame God for it, only yourself. Do you realize that? But despite all that, Jesus looks down on you and he still cares. That the Lord Jesus Christ will send someone, will send something to be able to help you with your problems. If you're willing to admit your wrongs, ang problema natin, may problema na nga tayo, na mga bagay na ganyan, hindi pa natin inaamin, mali tayo. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Hello? Are you listening to me? Hindi mo inaamin, mali ka. Hindi mo inaamin na kasalanan mo. Malimit, gusto nating sabihin, Kasalanan to na ibang tao. Hindi. Kasalanan mo. You know, may mga, may mga anak na walang galang sa kanilang mga trouble, ang kanilang sinisisi mga magulang nila. Eh. May mga asawa na talagang walang pag-ibig, ang sinisisi mga asawa nila. May mga kapatid sa kanila mga problema, ang sinisisi ang kapwa-kapatid. Salamat, nagkaroon ka ng kapatid na masisisi mo. Salamat, nagkaroon ka ng asawa na masisisi mo. Salamat, nagkaroon ka ng mga magulang na masisisi mo sa mga mali mo. Why don't you start blaming yourself because you're the one to blame? Before you ever say, Jesus cares. Why don't you start looking at your own life? Begin to realize how wicked you are. How wrong you are. Do you think that it is bad for you to say, Lord, I'm wicked? I say that many times. Lord, I'm not just sinful, I'm wicked. If not for your grace, if not for your mercy, my wickedness will still be in me. Do you realize that? Mahilig tayong mag-blame somebody else. Tigilan nyo na yan. Because that does not speak of you trusting in God. That does not speak of you believing in His Word. When you always blame somebody else. Let's say for example, talagang dapat naman siyang sasihin. I would like you to know. I'd like you to know. Any wrong thing that someone did to you, whether it be your husband, your son, your, 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 your brother, your sister, your daughter, listen, if they have done something wrong, God will take care of them. It is not you that will take care of them. Are you listening to me? It's not you. It's God. Just so you realize you're wrong. You realize your sin. You confess 
the sin. You come to God and say, Lord, I'm wrong. Change my heart. Change my attitude. Change my character. Because I want to do what is right. And the only right thing that I know I should do is your will in my life. You lang ang tama. You realize that? Hindi iniisip natin ang tama. Kundi yung kalooban ng Panginoon ang tama. Then you'll be able to know that truly Jesus cares. Pag-usapan natin sandali. Yung mga tao ron sa barko. Nung bumabagyo. Tama ba sila? Walang ibang tama kundi tumingin sa bagyo, tumingin sa Panginoon na siyang solusyon sa kanilang mga bagyo. Yun ang tama. Hindi yung nagpapaikot-ikot ka, yun pala, pupunta mo rin, Panginoon eh. Nagpaikot-ikot ka muna eh. And so many times, we make the Lord our last resort. No, the Lord should be our first resort and our last resort. Sa lahat ng mga bagay, siya dapat ang una, hindi ang huli. Then you will be able to know, feel, and really know that Jesus cares. Ang mga plano mo sa buhay, na ginawa mo sa buhay mo. Kalooban ng Diyos? Tumayo tayo lahat. Let's look at ourselves. As I look at my own life, you look at your life tonight. See right there who you are and who God is. You're saying that you're trusting the Lord? Is it really true? You're saying you love God? Is it really true? You're saying that everything you are is God? Is that really true? Huh? Or there are many times in your life you made that decision on your own. And then you want to ask God. You want to ask God, Lord, this is my decision. I hope it's yours. Instead of telling God, Lord, I'm wrong. And I want to make it right. Because I know you care. Faith, focus, foundation, fact. Search your heart right now. 